Hi everyone, thanks for your time today. I appreciate um, the opportunity to talk. Um, can you still see my screen? Is that still sharing? No? no. Okay, no. All right. let's try again. Share. No? Yes. Okay, cool. So I can't see you guys, but um, I believe you're still there. So, all right. Um, so my name's Rob Trans. Um, I work for the Office of Digital Government, um, which is part of Department of Premier and Cabinet. Um, I've been with Office of Digital Government for the last three years. Um, and how do I move this along? And today I'm going to present um, wa.gov.au and how um, our website came along. Um, just for your knowledge, it's based on Drupal 9 and Salsa have done quite a bit of work with us in the last, well, 24 months and hopefully moving forward. Um, so, so in 2016, we had an agency called the Office of Auditor General who um, did an audit of all of state government websites in WA. And they found that there was 450 websites um, with 450 different user experiences and hundreds of different CMS platforms. Um, this was costing government 25 million. And they said, this is absolutely crazy. Why do we need to have so many websites? Why don't we just have one? And that's how um, WAGov was formed under the Office of Digital Government. Um, so WAGov came about and the idea was it was fragmented before. We had all these different systems and contracts with providers. And we um, now got this one CMS and one website. Um, so it's a single portal with hopefully all our government services for Western Australia on our site, um, a consistent user experience, and just to make life easier um, for the public to find the appropriate um, category and service on the site. So there's the benefit there to reduce the cost, improve usability, and, and so on. So um, we're not state doing this. Um, obviously, you guys look after GovCMS, um, where I believe um, there's 306 sites, on, 92 agencies on 306 sites, um, one platform. Um, Victoria are also doing this, where they've, um, as of date, they've got websites on the one CMS, uh, over nine different agencies. Um, New South Wales, the same. Um, they've consolidated or closed 86 websites and put them onto the one, and they've got 500 to tackle. So West Australia isn't the only agency, uh, only state tackling this. This is what we're all moving to. So the idea, as I mentioned, it's a consistent new app. So if you're on a mobile phone or a desktop or a tablet, you get the same look and feel. It's responsive. Um, to the user. Um, each agency that onboards onto our platform will have the same homepage look and feel. So the idea is the user doesn't have to learn the new user experience to be able to work out how to navigate the website. Um, our website is primarily built on search. Um, so we've got, um, there's two components of that. We've got um, something called schema on our templates. So on set templates, we got schema and that's to help with SEO um, for the major search engines. And we've also got the internal search, which is based on Elastic. So it's the, the, the traditional navigation does no longer exist or is in a limited form. It's a, the site is based on search. So um, my team, um, they, how it works is we manage the Drupal 9 platform. So we're responsible for the security and functionality enhancements. Um, it all comes through us. Um, we help agencies migrate content. And by that, we offer training of the CMS. Um, so I will go out to the likes of Department of Justice or Public Sector Commission or Department of Treasury and train them on how to use this CMS and how to add their content. Um, each agency has their own security group, so they maintain their own content. They have workflows within that security group. Um, so 
Yeah, agent, from agency to agency, they only see their own content. Um, we've got an MOU document which sets out our um, services and the expectations between agency to agency. So as with government, we don't sell WA Gov with no money changing between agencies, that understanding. And the idea is as our platform improves, the agencies with the biggest budget um, will also grow with the smallest budgets. So an example is when Department of Finance onboarded three years ago, they identified a number of different templates which they felt that our solution didn't offer. And so they invested um, some money into that. We developed them. And then every single agency that's onboarded since gets the benefit, benefit from that. So it's not the likes of Department of Transport putting half a million dollars into their CMS and only they benefit. It's everyone in state WA benefits at the same time. And uh, probably the most important thing is the content isn't agency focused, it's um, citizen focused. So, and, and that's with that search behind it. So the, the, the public don't have to go to the main road website or the Department of Transport website. They come to, they go either go to the search engines and type in, I want to renew my driving license, or they come to our search and everything is in that one website. So um, the benefits to government um, is there's a one government web design, consistent user experience, which is simple, mobile responsive. Accessibility is huge for us. Um, so we run an accessibility check on the site once a week. Um, we use a tool called Power Map of Sort Site. And that's just to review the content. And if there's any accessibility issues with the content, our team will work with that agency and upskill those staff so they, they don't make those mistakes again in the future. If there's accessibility issues with the templates, then um, our agency is responsible for that to fix it. I mean, again, everyone benefits. Um, we trained over 300 different um, CMS users over the three years. And that's been really powerful um, for the likes of when we had the pandemic, WA government is very small in comparison with Victoria and New South Wales. But um, we pulled in staff from agencies who have already onboarded onto our platform. And that allowed um, these people to come on and hit the ground running. They didn't have to learn a new CMS or a new, yeah, new system. So they were ready to go and knew what they were doing. Then there's the, the savings to the government. I, we build it once and it, it's for all. We don't have to build it for individuals. From a citizen's perspective, um, it's that one user experience. It's simple. It's mobile responsive. Um, and you don't need to know government structure to be able to find out that information, or that's that's the hope. Um, from an agency's perspective, so there's the whole of government, there's the agency, and then there's the citizen and the agencies. When they onboard WA Gov, they no longer have to pay for hosting or, or support contracts with agencies. So there's that cost saving from government they, as it stands, they can choose how they invest that money they've already using in their budgets to improve other digital experiences, okay? And there's reduced reduced operational risk. So um, we're on Drupal 9.3, in the next six months, we'll be on Drupal 9.4. Whereas back in the day, the agencies were responsible for security patching and so on. It's just one, one site that we have to worry about. So um, the website launched in 2018. Um, when they launched, they didn't have any agencies on board. Um, they reached out to all of state government and asked for their top services to the public. And so there was a, a task where content was written to, to add that content on. And so there's that point, that main focal point. Um, we, as I mentioned, there's the typical information architecture doesn't exist um, where you'd have your home about and your annual reports. It's all based on standalone content and search based content. So it's, um, it's a real <coughs> mindset because 
Yeah, users are used to writing their own content and just for them in their agency website. But now they have to be really descriptive in their page titles and so on. So when the search engine does find their content, they know exactly what the citizen knows exactly what they're looking for. Um, in the three years, we've onboarded over 81 agencies or initiative websites. Um, we've got the four main, the big boys, um, and we're hosting the COVID comms information. Now that has been a huge game changer for WA Gov because the presence of that COVID information is, is number one, what the public are interested in. Um, when we had lockdown three last this time last year, um, we had 560,000 people hit the website in a day. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just been a success to date. Um, so now this is the tricky bit because <laughs> we're such a small team um, and with so many agencies on board, it's interesting of how we prioritize feature requests. So at the minute we have a, a backlog of agencies saying we want X, Y or Z. Um, and we're, we're currently maturing how we, what, uh, A, how we fund it and B, how we work as a team. So hopefully with SALSA's help moving forward in the future, we'll be able to actually action some of these features rather than just sit on them. Um, is, are people interested in the actual nitty gritty of the system rather than the high level? So I can continue if you are. more than happy for you to continue, Robert. Okay, cool. All right, so um, WA Gov is based on Drupal 9.3 as we speak. Um, there's plans to move on to four and five in the next six months. Um, we, the, as I said, the navigation is very limited, um, but what we've done is we've implemented uh, a taxonomy by the federal government, which is called the Australian Government Architecture Framework model and within this um, model there's different taxonomies and models so the one we implemented three years ago was service for citizens so content for the public or uh, service information for the public um, with South's help um, at Christmas we developed another two uh, taxonomies which are service support and management of government so these fall under the heading WA government and this is basically government dealing with government rather than, yeah, because before we had those taxonomies, all content was added into that service for citizen and it was becoming confusing. So um, the site is built on Elasticsearch, which I believe is AWS. Um, so we've got Elastic capabilities behind there. Um, there's schema technology on certain templates. Um, so schema is basically metadata behind the page and that assists with big, the big search engines like so Bing, um, Bing and Google and, and so on, understanding the context of your content. So we've, we've got nine different templates and there's four schemas implemented. Um, so we've got the landing page, the government organization, the service page, which is the, those three um, taxonomies I've already mentioned, a how-to, which is a step-by-step -step information on how to achieve a task or a goal. So there's a, that's built on the multi-step guide template. Um, we've introduced new technology as the years have gone on. And I, I think Salsa may have had something to do with this. Um, have your say. So it's, a, it's basically a central point where government can advertise their consultations. So the public go to the have your say page and agencies who have onboarded onto our platform can link to their consultation platform using an API and that information gets pulled across. Or for those who don't have a consultation platform, we have something called Smartsheet, which is like an Excel spreadsheet, online Excel spreadsheet, where they can update their consultation information and it's displayed in a focal point. Um, We've migrated a, web, a website called Premier and Cabinet Ministers over last year. Now this was based on an old SharePoint website. 
and it was separate and isolated. Again, using APIs, we're servicing all the minister information on WA Gov. So it looks like it's actually within Drupal, but it, it's not. It's the, the, the source of truth is in SharePoint and there's an API pulling that information across. Um, now, having a whole of government website, as I said, the, the, it's really difficult for the users to change their mindset of writing content. So that's been a real learning curve. But when we uh, onboarded the likes of Department of Finance and Department of Justice, they were all adding their FOI forms onto the site. So when you had your own agency website, you had your own FOI form. Now we've got one government website with 15 different FOI forms. Um, the likes of Department of Finance used that government service template to promote their FOI form. And as a result, they were getting their information at the top of the rankings with Google and, and our search page. And so the public not caring which agency offers which service, they were at the poor FOI officer at Department of Finance was um, receiving all requests for all the state government. So this realized that government, as well as this, the website, we actually have to change our internal processes. Um, so there's an FOI form um, which is created and it's got some smarts in it where um, the public can say, I want to uh, reach out to the Department of Premier and Cabinet. And then that will that smart will send it off to the FOI officer at DPC. Um, we're currently using a feedback form um, with a product called Get Feedback, which is by user Biller, and that allows customers to leave feedback. And then we've got a global alert banner as well, which um, again, um, I believe Salsa helped us with where major alerts or announcements um, can be controlled on the top of the site. And yeah, con that's controlled by our COVID comms team. Now I'll quickly just brush over this. Um, so as I mentioned, there's security groups. Um, when the site was built, it was based on agency um, security. But being a whole of government website, we soon realized that there was editors from different agencies that would want to contribute to content. So we'd, we'd have like an initiative, as one called Streamline, where the likes of DMERS, Finance, DPLH, blah, 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 they all wanted to contribute. And so our security model didn't actually allow for that because it, it was only one user per one security group. So thanks to the thanks to Celsius help, um, we changed that security model where we could have multiple users in different groups. So um, you could have one user in 10 different groups and sharing and contributing together. So that, that was a real improvement, which we did at Christmas. Um, there's workflow. Um, where we have editors, approvers, moderators, and publishers. Generally, how it works is we have an editor who can create and edit content, and then a publisher, which would, could be a, a central comms team, reviewing that content and publishing it. So, yeah, it, it depends on the agency, how they wish to work. Um, I'm not going to show you every single template, but there is there's nine or ten different templates. Um, it's really important to use the correct template for the correct reason. We've had agencies kind of default to the content subpage um, because they're not thinking about the context of their content. They're looking for the look and feel of the, the content. So this subpage is for information but it has the most functionality where they can create images of cards and so on. So people kind of default to that, to that template all the time, but it breaks the way the website works if they do that. So that's a real, real training um, thing to pick up on. Um, at Christmas, we also launched new Google Analytics support. So previously it was Universal Analytics. We've now got support for GA4. Um, which is really useful with GA4 being the, the sole analytics package as of July 1st next year. Um, there's version control on our site. There's layout. So what does that mean? Because the fields in our template do not all contribute to content, um, we streamline that process of having 
you've got a content tab, which is your main content, and there's supplementary info, which means you can tag related information to your content. There was one for navigation where you can create items to be able to link to other pages. And then there's one for the internal and external search. So there's that. Um, we've got scheduling pub ability. So that's reasonably new um, thing where we can say um, the, the conditions of COVID comms change over midnight and we can get content to be archived or published at a certain point in time. Um, previously, we didn't have that. So that, that's really powerful. Um, yeah, so that's that's my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, if anyone has any? Uh, I, I do have some. All right. Yeah. Um, so I got, um, uh, you, you talk about using Elasticsearch for yep. searching. Oh, yep. I better turn on my video, sorry. Um, is this a, a, um, a content search? Yes. Like a, a PDF content search as uh, well? It, well, it's not configured that way. It's just searching the text on the page within Drupal pages. Um, it doesn't, it hasn't been configured to search the content of documents. Um, no, I don't know why. I don't even know if it's possible, but yeah, that's how it's been set up. Okay. And also I um, I get the, because Elasticsearch also have the natural language processing capability. Are you using it? Uh, Are you using it? I'm not aware that we're using it. Now, okay. this was built, the Elasticsearch was built um, three years ago and it hasn't actually been updated. Oh, we, okay. we, we know that there's a huge gap with the search and how how because when we established there wasn't much content mm -hmm. we now have 81 agencies with 4,000 pages so it's becoming more apparent that um yeah we need to improve that search capability even if it's by security group because agencies are very me 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 and they don't think of the whole bigger picture mm -hmm. so they they like i know um electoral commission want their search just to be their content only so mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. Be done there. Yeah, that would be good if um yeah we we um we looking at that as well. But uh, yeah, we're not sure uh, how far we can go. Anyway, so uh, I got another question, but oh, like right. if the other people have a chance to ask as well. No. Well, no, no, then I ask, I continue. Um, how do you deal with the preview um, before you publish to the public? How do we deal with what, sorry? Uh, preview the page with for preview. approval, yeah. Okay, so it's just normal Drupal. Um, so we have content which is it can be in draft mm. um, and we can give, um, so agencies kind of create their content, but we can give a read-only account to different business units and that allows them to log into the CMS and view the content in draft status um, before it goes live. So that, right. that's one option. Um, being in draft, um, I think this is standard Drupal, but it's pink. There's a pink background to show that it's not live. And so I think that's normal Drupal. The other option is, um, and we've just rolled this out recently, is... The, we we allow agencies to publish the content, but we blocked it from the Elastic Search and also um, using robots.txt, we block the pages from being available in search. Um, we had to do that when the service WA app released at Christmas. Um, we had to show our privacy statement to the Google App Store and iOS Store, which they had to get their lawyers involved but we obviously didn't want the public finding that. So it was a long URL, which no one knew the link of, but it was blocked from internal and external search. So there's two methods. Right. Um, do you consider using the single sign-on or something? Because I, I think 
you absolutely <laughs> absolutely so that's actually our next project uh, i believe it's our next project so we need to um we need to have this complete by end of quarter three so in the next three months um single sign-on now how that's going to work um we haven't started the project yet but single sign-on is very important and is it really important because as we've got so many agencies on our sites and 350 editors um no, agencies very rarely let us know when staff changes. I, lots of the time, even their comms teams don't know. So there's a policy that we've got where if a user hasn't logged in for more than three months, then we block them. Uh, and generally they reach out six months down the line, so I need access. Uh, I actually had an email today. So single sign-on would be so useful for when colleagues leave their agency and then their accounts just deactivate and then they can no longer access. So single sign-on is very important to WAGov in the future. Mm, yes, uh, I agree because otherwise you got a lot of overhead mm. and, yep. um, and security access may not be happy with that. Um, yeah, yep. so we yep. have the same problem, uh, but uh, we, because we using, uh, I'm not sure whether you your Drupal site is headless. No, it's not. No. Yeah, we are. So we that will be a bit of challenge um, for yep. us. Mm. Yeah. But I do have the other question. Sorry oh, about that, everyone. Um, so how can you handle the low? Because you got a fair bit of agency maybe assessed at the same time, and I. Personally, uh, because I, I haven't used Drupal before, that's the first time. It's not very quick um, or fast um, system that handle loading, I believe, isn't it? Especially if you got some content is dynamic. Yeah, so we're based on Amazon, um, Amazon Web Services. Okay. So um, I know we've got CloudFront in there, um, which is, yeah, uh, it's, um, so what happens is the page gets cached in certain environments around the, the world, and then they're hitting that cache rather than the database. Right. Now, it's a great question because when we had this major traffic, we did actually have a crash. And um as the Salsa boys know, they've got a product called Quant, which is static um, static solution. So you're not hitting the database. Now we're actually, that's also something we're trying to implement. We're trying to implement Quant in there. So we're just servicing the HTML of the page and that also frees up the database. So if there's urgent messages happening in the background, the editors can still update the site. Um, a year ago when we had the issue, the whole system crashed and we were reliant on, well, getting the resource back up. So yeah, I don't think it's Drupal related. It's the technology, it's infrastructure, but above it or below it. Right, okay. How do you find um, the Google Analytics 4 version so <laughs> far? Um, extremely, it's very different, um, very powerful. Um, but yeah, it's a real learning curve. Um, I think you need to spend time playing with the reports. There's, there's lots of good materials on YouTube out there. Um, okay. So I, I've managed to implement some dashboards using those vid resources. But every time I go back in, it's like, oh, this is so different to GA3. So, but it's powerful. You can do a lot more stuff with it than what you could in the old product. Right, okay. Because I think everyone need to migrate anyway, so yeah. that will be a hot topic. <laughs> yeah, and start now because this time next year, Universal Analytics will be gone, and if you start in nine months, you're going to lose all your data as well. So if you at least implement GA four now, mm. that data is being captured in the background, even if you don't use it now, it's is there in their, their yeah the system. So. Yeah, very good advice, especially some. Uh, of the event, um, it's only happened e uh, once per year, yeah. and you may be losing uh, the cap opportunity absolutely. to test it out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, mm. 
Yeah, no, um, Th that's all my questions. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm extremely uh, passionate about WA Gov, um, and I'm looking forward to enhancing the product because there's there's gaps in there. Um, but yeah, it's I'm really passionate because it's so beneficial to government and the public that we get this right, rather than going back to the silos of systems. So, yeah. mm, yes, and do for the citizen because they don't need to go around different um, websites yeah. again and again. Yeah, and, and I guess it's a learning curve as well because agencies, they're thinking as silos. Mm. And so as agencies on board say, well, these guys, DPC have got this content on there. It's like, but we've got this content. It's like, yeah, work with each other, improve your content, don't have duplicates on the same site it doesn't make any sense you're gonna to have to yeah so it's a real change of mindset and structure of full government but it's been good excellent yeah cool thank you anyone else thanks a lot for this uh, robert and alice i'll stop recording